One of the biggest new things on the PlayStation 5 is of course the DualSense wireless controller and in order to really get a feel for what this controller can do, I've been playing a little game called Astro's Playroom. Welcome back to MChat, the second best place in the known universe for talking about geek stuff. Today we are talking about Astro's Playroom, the pre-installed game on the PlayStation 5 that serves as a tech demo for its controller, the DualSense controller which we have right here. So what do you actually think of this game? Well, as I said, it's a tech demo so you need to go in with those expectations, but even if you do go in with those expectations, this game is phenomenal. This is the easily the best tech demo I've ever played. And honestly, it's one of the best launch titles of any console. And it serves to really show off this controller right here, which, as I said, is one of the biggest new features of the PlayStation 5. Going into the console, of course, we have the haptic feedback, we have the adaptive triggers, and this game really shows those things off. And they are truly, truly, like, revolutionary things. I can talk about this game here, and I can talk about this controller here, but you really need to experience this for yourself to really know exactly what you're getting into. I'll start off by talking about the haptic feedback and usually in controllers you'll have your typical vibration rumble stuff that has varying levels of intensity and that's essentially it but with the haptic feedback there's different levels of intensity and different styles of rumble and vibration in different parts of the controller. There's different feelings for different surfaces whether you're walking on grass, you're walking on ice or you're walking on really rocky terrain it all feels different and it really puts you into the game. I imagine that if you play this in like a VR game especially, it will just completely immerse you in like nothing else. Not only does the terrain impact the haptic feedback, but also the weather conditions as well. When it's windy, you can feel that in the controller, you can hear it through the little speaker. And especially when it's raining, that was probably one of the most immersive experiences I felt in a controller. You can feel every little bit of raindrop and it's these very slight vibrations. And then when it starts hailing as well, those vibrations get more intense. We'll now move on to the adaptive triggers. And this was the thing that really blew me away on the controller. Usually with triggers, you press them down and that's it. There's no tension. There's nothing. It just feels very basic and it doesn't really immerse you in the game. But with this, there's points where there's different tensions on the trigger. For example, if you're holding back a bow, you probably heard this multiple times with the bowstring and you can feel the tension when you pull it back. There's also a spring-loaded frog suit in the game and when you're using that you can feel the tension on the triggers as well. But one of the things that I loved the most was the little rocket ship that you fly in. When you're setting off you push the triggers down, you feel the tension and then you set off. And even when you're boosting as well you can feel that tension in the triggers. And it's just phenomenal. All these features make for a fantastic experience of a game, but not only that, the platforming in here is great, as with Astrobot Rescue Mission. It's a really fun platforming adventure that, yes, it's short, but for a game that's free, you really cannot complain about it, and there's actually a lot more in this game than I thought there'd be. Throughout the game, you're collecting puzzle pieces that make up a mural, which looks really awesome, by the way, but probably the major thing that you're collecting is accessories, which are as you guessed, accessories from PlayStation's past, so from the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, 3, 4, 5. And all that stuff is really just cool to see. There's so much deep cut stuff in here. For example, there's a PSP webcam. Who knew that existed? There's also a network adapter for the PS2. There's all these random like accessories that I never knew existed. There's like a PlayStation 1 Go that I think was only available in Japan, which is essentially like the precursor to the PSP and the PS Vita. Now I'm not a diehard PlayStation fan, but I feel like I know enough about the brand and the consoles. But there's so much stuff in here that I'd never heard of. And there's tons of Easter eggs as well for different PlayStation characters, stuff from PlayStation lore. You've probably seen the image of the little bots as Kratos and Atreus from God of War. There's tons of stuff like this. There must be at least a hundred. And whilst I understood a lot of the references to different PlayStation games, there's a lot in here that I really didn't know. Overall, Astro's Playroom is phenomenal. I really can't talk negatively about this game. Everything from the platforming, the features of the dual sense, and then even the collectibles that you find in game, all the little Easter eggs, the deep cut stuff, it all just makes for something that's not only a love letter to PlayStation, but a really fantastic introduction to this new console. So with all that in mind, I'm going to give Astro's Playroom an S. Thank you for watching my review of Astro's Playroom. If you could, make sure to leave a like on the video as it does really help out the channel. And also subscribe if you do want to stay up to date with this content and you enjoy this kind of stuff. Also, let me know down in the comment section below if you've played Astro's Playroom, did you think it was a fantastic experience? And does it have you excited for the future of the DualSense controller? Thank you for tuning in to MChat today. And remember, even in the worst of times, there's always entertainment. See you guys next time.